All right, we're pretty excited. We're going to do our first viewer request. And we've had a viewer request that we do this diagnostic car scanner here. This is the Elm 327. This is a really inexpensive car scanner. How much was this, like $12? Maybe 15. 15, maybe $15. No more than $15, I'm pretty sure. And it works with your phone. And we're going to go ahead and set up. We haven't tried this yet, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the interesting thing about this tool is that apparently it works with a number of different free applications that are available on, for example, the Apple App Store. The recommended one is this one, OBD2 Car Scanner Torque Fixed. And uh, this is as opposed to some of these other ones like the Wi-Fi Diagnostics Program, the EOBD, whatever. Um, so this is the one that they are recommending that you get. So we're gonna go ahead and get that and we'll download it to the phone and then connect the tool. Okay, we're gonna take the tool, plug it into the OBD2 port right there. And for this application, we're just gonna turn the key to on for now, not start the car. We'll do that in a little bit though. Okay, so we've got the car scanner app. One thing that is uh, something you'll have to do is connect to your Wi-Fi with it. So you need to go to your Wi-Fi settings and choose the OBD2 Wi-Fi that is generated by the device. It is not Bluetooth, it is Wi-Fi. One thing to keep in mind with that, not a big deal, I guess, but since you're tied to the Wi-Fi with the device, you won't be able to do things like look something up like a check engine light code on Google while you're connected because your Wi-Fi is going to be taken up. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and press the application here. We're gonna go ahead and connect and it should connect to the Wi-Fi from the device. It did. And now we are connected. As you can see, we've got lots of things that we can do. Let's just run down the list. Let's go to the dashboard here. And you can see that it brought up a couple things. One of the things we can do, we can move these around. I can add different things and choose the format. Uh, this is actually, you know what? This is actually really pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. This kind of reminds me of the very first scan tool that I ever used where you were able to create your own graphic interface any way that you wanted. So for example, like with the fuel pressure here, we may want that fuel pressure as a graph. So I can put that as a graph, select it, move it wherever I want. And now I've got a graph of the fuel pressure. I can add another thing in here too. We could do mass airflow rate. Maybe that I want just as a digital output like that. And I can move that wherever I want. Just move that right there. And I can just fill up my screen with all my data like that. So that's pretty impressive. Let's take a look at the responsiveness of this real quick. I'm gonna hop in the car. Okay, gonna push the pedal down a little bit. Oh, and it's immediate response. Absolute immediate response response. There is no lag time here. Let's start the car up real quick. Yeah, the data is lightning fast. All right, pretty impressive. One of the things that I've noticed is my fuel pressure is in kilopascals. I really want that in PSI. So I'm going to press this gear icon here. All right, and we see that it changed now to PSI, something we can identify with a little bit better. Okay, so far we're off to a pretty good start here. Now let's go to the live data, and it's saying we have to select a live data mode. And it looks like we're gonna make a chart here, and as you guys are familiar, graphing is critically important for me. We gotta be able to produce nice, clear graphs that we can set parameters for the amplitude and time basis and things where applicable. So we're gonna probably go ahead and do a combined graph here. And we may do something, for example, like short-term and long-term 
We'll just do that one bank against engine RPM. That would be a very typical graph that I would do to start a diagnosis. And then the free, oh, wait a minute. In the free version, you can select only two parameters. Okay, that is, I'm not gonna lie, that is going to be a big negative strike on this because it says you have to upgrade the software in order to get more than two parameters. Essentially, for all practical purposes, with the free software, that makes this useless, and I don't like that. All right, now, now that's a problem because, because now we have to find out how much is it to upgrade. Down at the bottom, it says upgrade to Car Scanner Pro. No ads, no limits, low price. All right, let's see how much it is. $4 for six months, $5 for a year. $5 for a year. See, this is where I get a little bit irked. Um, you can also do $8 for forever. Just include that with the price of the tool. Just, just charge $20 for the tool and give us everything here. But this thing where you get nickeled and dimed for uh, extra options, which you need, all right, that's a, big, that's a big strike for me. Okay, I decided to change to engine RPM and fuel pressure just to get a little bit better idea of the resolution with the graph. I think if we turn sideways, that is a little bit better. I do like the graphing capability for sure. It looks like we can also maybe expand. Look at that, we can get really good detail here change our time base, change our amplitude there. Look at the immediate response on the engine RPM there too. Well, the graphing is actually really nice on this tool, I will admit. And I really do like the uh, interface on the dashboard. The live data, being able to select multiple parameters like that, and you have to pay an extra fee definitely not one of my favorite things. All right, let's go to another function here. Let's look at our options, all sensors. And here we can run through all the sensors here. Sometimes on these tools, you can click something and make a graph out of it, and you can actually. So it's very, it's very intuitive. I've never used this tool before, but I know from other similar tools that it does seem to have these functions that are just very intuitive. All right, diagnostic trouble codes. Wow, there's a lot of options here. And we can pull trouble codes on pretty much any system here. Uh, you notice at the bottom of the screen, there's ads showing, by the way. I guess those get rid of uh, when you get the pro version. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and look at these codes now. It's gonna look at all these modules, so this could take a while. We'll come back after this loads. Okay, it's been a good solid three minutes, I would say. And we're finally getting our result. No DTC, that was a long way to go for no trouble codes, but of course we don't have any on this engine. I would expect it to list all of the modules that were tested and everything, but uh, you definitely might want to uh, be a little more selective of what you're testing for DTC so you don't go through all that. The freeze frame, uh, we don't have any DTC, so we can't apply that. Freeze frame tells you exactly the conditions that were present at the time the DTC was set. Uh, Non-continuous monitors, this is going to be data on all different sensors for emissions purposes and things like that. That is quite an eye chart though. We can upgrade to the Scanner Pro, which I am not going to do. My cars, obviously you can create a garage of cars and keep data that you record for each of those cars. Uh, settings, let's see what we got here. Uh, we can change our default units. We can change things with the GUI, things like you would expect. 
pretty standard. Um, you know, if you've never seen one of these before, it might seem impressive, all of this data that you get, particularly under the live data there with all these parameters. Even six or seven years ago, I'd be really impressed by that. Do keep in mind, this is status quo now for any scanner, no matter the price, uh, to get that kind of data. Uh, one thing also you will notice there is no bi-directional control. I would of course never expect that on a scan tool that's under a couple of hundred dollars. So that is not a strike against this that there is not bi-directional control. Bi-directional control means that you can actually control things like set the accelerator pedal at a certain position if it's a drive-by wire or open the EGR valve so many degrees to see if it responds. You will not be able to do that with this tool. It's read only. Uh, statistics, it looks like, um, ah, this could be different things for driving. Uh, I know there was like an acceleration test here. Yeah, down here, we'll get there. Recording data, recording data is actually pretty important. I wonder if you can do that in the free version, by the way. Okay, so it looks like you can record from the free version. That is pretty important because you wanna be able to go back and look at your data. Acceleration tests, this looks a lot more fun than what it actually is. It basically uses GPS so that you can do performance testing and see what your zero to 60 times are, quarter mile times, things like that. And then emissions tests, this is really important actually, and I'm glad that this is included in the free version. This shows you the status of your emissions monitors. Let's say you fail an emissions test because emissions monitors weren't completed. You can see which of those tests were not completed. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of these are also just not available or not applicable a lot of times. All right, the ELM 327 diagnostic scanner and the application that will work from your cell phone as well. Uh, I, I have to say, things I like about it for 15 bucks, can you diagnose a car with this? Yes, you absolutely can, no question about it. I really, really loved the dashboard. I loved how you could customize and put a graph or a dial or a digital output for any parameter as where you like on the screen, uh, as often as you like on the screen and really customize it. That is really enjoyable. The one thing I don't like about the tool, I don't like that for just five measly dollars, you upgrade to the pro version. They should have just included that with the tool. They really should have, and just increased the price a little bit. I just don't like the concept of that. Actually, Vicky had a really good idea. Because I am just plain not going to use this thing, uh, we know who it is that sent uh, the request for the Elm 327. We're just gonna go ahead and send this to you for requesting the review. There you go, there's your Elm 327 review and I hope this helps the person who requested the review.